Refitting a radio controlled Glasgow paddle steamer. Part 8. Completing the job and testing that everything works. In the first part of this episode, I'm going to change the gas jet. I'm going to change the number 5 jet for a number 8 jet which is a bit bigger and see what the difference is. With the gas jet holder clamped in a pair of pliers, I just use my barco spanner to slacken it off and then it unscrews quite easily. I bought these new jets from a company called Clevedon Steam and I bought them via the Clevedon Steam eBay shop and as you can see here is a number 8 jet fitted, all ready to go. In this clip I'm fitting the other end of the pipe to the tap on the gas tank. And now the exciting part, I'm lighting the chimney. And look what happens. The gas is burning quite nicely outside the chimney which is no good at all. So a number 8 gas jet is too big for this job. Back to the drawing board and I refit the number 5. This time when I light the gas at the top of the chimney it flashes straight down to the burner head. So it's a number 5 gas jet for this burner. In no time at all steam is raised in the boiler and everything's fine. No bad smell at the chimney, no carbon monoxide detector going off. So I can fit the boiler into the boat, but I have a problem. The original water gauge did not have a drain tap at the bottom, and it's a bit of a waste of time anyway, because when the boiler is in the boat, there's no possible way you can get your hand in there to turn it. So the easiest job is to just remove it like this using a cutter. And here is the boiler fitted into the boat using the original screw holes in the wood. I've put the pipe in place and connected it to the gas tank, so it's all ready to go. Well almost, it's possibly a good idea to connect the steam outlet to the engine. And that's what I'm doing here. As always, I'm using my Barco spanner because it's got very large, wide jaws for its size and doesn't round the nuts, as you can clearly see. In this clip, I'm tightening up the pipe onto the engine. And once again, because of the width of the jaws on this Barco spanner, I can even use it successfully without rounding the nut, even at an angle like this. I'm just making sure that I have the gas tank cover the right way around, and yes I do, because when I try it the other way, it doesn't fit quite as well. Everything's looking good, and it's even possible to fit the cover with this part in place. Time for a change of scenery, I need to make a plug for the end of the drain pipe on the small condenser. With a piece of brass hexagon bar fitted into the chuck, I'm using a parting tool as a turning tool to reduce the diameter of the end of this piece of brass so that it fits in this piece of silicone rubber pipe that you've just seen. And so the sharp edge of the brass doesn't cut the silicone pipe, I've rounded it slightly and I'm using some emery cloth to remove the sharp edge. I've parted off the piece that I want and I've turned it round in the chuck and I'm cleaning up the other end. This small brass plug now fits into the drain pipe of the condenser oil trap. There's one job I've forgotten about, and that is the mast. The mast was originally captive to the fitting, which was no good. So I cut the mast off the fitting, drilled down the fitting part way, reattached the fitting to the deck, and now the mast just plugs in, which is a far better idea. Here's a close-up of the condenser oil trap drain pipe, and the idea, when it's running, is I fold it like this, upside down. And the pressure of the rubber tubing against the front part of the open hatch keeps the condenser away from the radio equipment because the condenser just sits loosely on two bolts. In between the steam pipe from the boiler and the steam pipe to the engine is a displacement lubricator as you can see here. I've removed the cap of the displacement lubricator and in this clip I'm filling it with steam oil. I'm being very careful not to drop this cap into the bottom of the boat, I refit it to the lubricator. And now, as it says on screen, it's time for the steam test, with the steam plant and radio control fitted into the boat. First of all, I remove the deck hatch, then I turn on the gas and light the chimney as usual. Once the burner is lit, I open the gas valve fully, and I replace the hatch. With the boiler half full of water and the number 5 gas jet doing its stuff, you will notice there is no howling, which makes a change. Normally these centiflue boilers make a howling noise at first. This is important. Whenever you're using radio control systems, always turn on the transmitter first, followed by the receiver. That way the receiver has a signal to lock into. 
Although you can't see from this clip, there's about 15 pounds per square inch on the gauge. So I'm moving the servo back and forth, that's between forward and reverse, to let some of this steam into the engine to warm it up and get rid of the water. Because the first steam to go into the engine immediately condenses to quite a lot of water, so really I'm just pumping it out into the condenser oil trap. It takes a few moments for all the water to clear, but eventually the engine runs quite smoothly. I've found that it's a good idea to empty the condenser oil trap before you put the boat in the water, because quite a lot of water goes into the condenser during the original sequence when the steam is condensing to water. The slight squeaking that you can hear is coming from the paddle shaft where it goes through into the boat, and this should clear when the paddles get wet. In this part of the clip you can see that the rudder also works via radio control. Now it's painting time once again, I've already painted one side, so this is the other side. Just as before, I'm using matte black paint and I've been very careful not to get the matte black paint where I don't want it to go. And that's why I'm holding the small lifeboat out of the way. A viewer keeps writing in who seems to know a lot about paddle boats and goes on about how the paddles should feather here, there and everywhere. Well. They do. The paddles are at 90 degrees as they hit the water. I'm no expert on paddle steamers, but it works, and it's the way of things. So please don't write in again. It's getting a bit boring. It's worth remembering, it is only a toy boat after all. This viewer hasn't really driven me to the mainline injection of drugs. I'm just showing the blunt needle syringe used for removing the condensate from the displacement lubricator. The other syringe is for filling the boiler and draining the condenser and here I'm fitting the gas tank adapter to the canister. So that's about it. The boat is recommissioned and appears to work perfectly well. This boat is already sold and the customer is going to pick it up today. And today is Saturday the 18th of May. If you're one of my Patreon supporters, you'll probably be watching this around the 18th of May. But if you're not a Patreon subscriber to my channel, you'll be watching this two or three months later. That's it for this series, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.